What's up guys, Dan here from Kilowatt Auto. So in today's video, I wanna share with you a recent road trip that I took in my Tesla Model 3. So in total, the road trip was about 340 miles and over 300 of those miles were driven by the car in autopilot. So I do have full self-driving and my car was running version 2020.24.6 dot four in terms of its software version. And in today's video, I wanna share with you my overall impressions of how the car did, as well as look at some specific instances where the car did struggle. Before we get started, if you're new to Kilowatt Auto, I started this channel with the purpose of documenting the ownership experience of the Tesla Model 3, as well as showing the car's progression to full self-driving. So if that's something you'd be interested in, definitely consider subscribing so you don't miss any of my weekly videos. I also put a referral link in the description of each of my videos, so if you use that referral code when you order your Tesla, you'll get 1,000 free supercharging miles when you take delivery. And on that note, I just wanted to say a special thank you and shout out to Jerry to being my first referral code user. I wanna start out by talking about the strengths of both full self-driving and navigate on autopilot. In next week's video, I do plan on getting into more of the numbers. So in that video, we'll take a look at the mileage, the efficiency numbers, charging time and charging rates, and more of the metrics in terms of the road trip. But in this video, I just wanted to focus on how the car performed, look at its strengths, and then also some opportunities for improvement. So Navigate on Autopilot was able to take me from on-ramp to off-ramp without any issues. It was able to take me through construction zones where there's cones on the roads, where the lanes might shift without any issues as well. And then it also was able to accurately predict battery levels at the charge points that I would have to stop during the road trip. And I'm not sure if this has to do with the weather being a little bit warmer. So with the warmer temperatures, the batteries are definitely much more efficient. So the car was able to accurately predict the mileage in the battery at the point where I stopped to charge. And I've mentioned this in past videos, but navigate on autopilot as well as full self-driving greatly reduced driver fatigue and that ultimately increases safety. So the entire road trip took about six hours total. And because most of it was actually done by the car, all I had to do was remain still engaged with the vehicle as it's driving because there were certain scenarios where I did have to make some minor adjustments. But overall, the car kept me much safer than typical driving for an extended period of time where you start to combat the highway hypnosis and just getting tired with longer duration driving. In terms of some area for improvement, I think the biggest area where Tesla still need to get better is their driver etiquette. So what I mean by this is that a lot of times when the car is going to make a lane change to pass slower moving traffic, it'll still maintain the speed that it was moving at. So the car will shift over into the passing lane and if I have it set at 70 miles an hour, it'll maintain that speed until it passes the car on the right, regardless of if there's 20 cars behind you that are tailgating you to try and pass. So something that can be a little bit annoying and a lot of times I'll just adjust the speed up so we pass the cars on the right but it would be cool and a little bit more convenient if the car was able to adjust the speed even if it was by two or three miles per hour once it's in the passing lane so it passes those slower moving cars a little bit quicker the car did phantom brake twice while we were on the highway. And for those of you that don't know what phantom braking is, basically it's whenever the car brakes for no apparent object in front of it. So we were driving about 70 miles per hour and whenever it did phantom brake, it would drop significantly down to either 60 or maybe even 55 miles per hour. There weren't any cars following close behind me, so not a big deal. Had we been in traffic though, or if it, the highway was a little bit more congested, that would definitely be a little bit more concerning. Another area where the car definitely needs a little bit of improvement is when it's changing lanes to follow a route. So a lot of times if you're on a two lane highway and a lane opens up on the right, whether it be an exit ramp or a ramp to another interchange, the car will move over into the left passing lane when it really doesn't need to. So this again becomes a driver etiquette issue where the car is potentially getting in front of faster moving traffic. It happened a couple times throughout this road trip, so it was just something that I noticed that definitely needs a little bit of work because the car could have just maintained the lane that it was in and still followed the route. Now I wanna get into some specific instances where the car either made a mistake or there's some opportunities for improvement. So I talked a little bit about construction zones earlier and overall Navigate on Autopilot handles construction zones fairly well. One thing it does not do though is slow down for construction zones. So I recognize that the car is not yet at the point where it's reading and interpreting speed limit signs. However, I think when it notices cones on the road, it should be programmed to automatically slow down a little bit 
Oftentimes, as we're moving through these construction zones, there's lane shifts and the car is just maintaining its speed, whether it be 65 or 70 miles per hour. So definitely an area that could benefit the driver if the car recognizes a lot of cones, that it should slow down a little bit just to maintain a more safe speed. In terms of traffic light recognition, the car is still doing very well with this feature. And on that note, if you missed last week's video, I did go into traffic light recognition and just took a bit of a deeper dive into how the car is now following leading cars through inner sections, but also reading traffic lights as they change to both yellow and red. So definitely check that video out if you missed it. But on this road trip, there were several portions of the highway that had traffic lights. And one weird interaction that occurred a couple of times is that some of these lights actually had warning lights about a thousand feet ahead of them. So these were just posts over the road with flashing yellow lights, alerting drivers that, hey, there's a traffic light up ahead. And I noticed that the car would actually label and recognize these as traffic lights. And in some cases, it did start to slow down. So I did have to hit down on the driver's stock or give the car a little bit of acceleration just so it didn't stop for those supposed traffic lights. And this is again, something that will only improve with time. So Tesla's neural net is drawing on the experience of all Tesla vehicles that are actively using autopilot on the road. So as the cars begin to recognize that the lights are not actually traffic lights and they're just warning signs, that hopefully will be phased out over time and the cars will stop labeling them as traffic lights. And then my last example is where the car was taking an interchange. So this actually ties in the whole notion of where the car will move into the left lane to follow the route. And then it decided also to slow down about 20 miles per hour. So it did create a bit of an unsafe situation. There weren't any cars behind me or close by though, so it wasn't a huge deal. But again, it was just sort of a weird interaction. I'm not sure why the car felt it needed to slow down that significantly for the interchange. All I had to do though was just bump up the speed on the steering wheel and then we were back on our way. So again, not a huge deal, but definitely an area where the car didn't make the best decisions overall. Overall, full self-driving makes longer road trips incredibly easy and a lot safer for the driver. And I've mentioned this in past videos, but the cars are programmed by humans in a way that unfortunately sometimes limits their ability to drive like a normal human. So it's just something to keep in mind. You still have to remain engaged throughout the entirety of the trip, but you're not engaged to the point where you're on edge all the time waiting for the car to make a mistake. Overall and in aggregate, the car is extremely safe when you're using Navigate on autopilot. It makes that driver experience a lot easier and much more enjoyable, especially for long road trips. As I mentioned earlier, next week's video will break down more of the numbers of this trip. So we'll look at interpreting efficiency numbers as well as mileage and charging peak rates just to take a look and see how you can interpret your Tesla's efficiency and plan for longer road trips. But make sure you hit the subscribe button and also hit the bell so you get notified when that video is posted next weekend. The referral code that I talked about earlier as well is also in the description down below. So if you're interested in ordering a Tesla, make sure you use that referral code and that'll get you 1,000 free supercharging miles. But that's actually where I'm gonna end today's video. If you enjoyed it, make sure you hit the like button. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.